What's up everybody? It's your boy Will coming at you with another movie log and today caps off the end of another spooky season, another horror-tober, and I wanted to take a moment to talk about some of the more notable horror movies that have come out in the last couple of months, share my thoughts on them. If you're watching this and spooky season has already ended, uh, but you're still looking for some leftovers that you can sink your teeth into, some spooky, scary horror movies, particularly of the new variety, then I figured I would share my thoughts on them, my recommendations, which ones I think are most worth checking out. So, without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, we have Barbarian, which is the solo directorial debut from Zach Kreger of Whitest Kids You Know fame. That's right, the same person who gave us this deranged nightmare also gave us this. John, that is the President of the United States. I don't care who it is, he's ruining Hamlet. Oh, now you fucked up! Now you fucked up! Now you fucked up! You have fucked up now! Now you fucked up! 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 Now you have fucked up! Mr. President, will you please be quiet? Suck my presidential cock, bitch! Barbarian has an incredibly effective premise for a horror movie. It follows a woman named Tess who is in Detroit for a job interview, but when she arrives at her Airbnb, she finds that it is overbooked with another guest. She would stay in a hotel, but there's a medical conference in town, which means that she can't get a hotel room. And now she has to make a decision between spending the night in her car in the middle of the Detroit ghetto or spending the night in an Airbnb with a complete stranger. Worst of all, the stranger is played by Bill Skarsgård and she has to decide which is more important, the fact that he's hot or the fact that he's hot, but also kind of creepy. I mean, look at those eyes. Like, have you ever seen eyes that are so dreamy and nightmarish at the same time? I think that this movie can be split into pr two pretty distinct parts. The first part is much more of a psychological horror movie and puts you in this terrifyingly realistic situation and sort of walks you through it step by step, sort of forcing you to question what you would do in that scenario, you know, especially if you were a woman. And it all culminates in some really creepy and upsettingly suggestive imagery. But then like a light switch, the first part of the movie ends, there's this big reveal, and then it becomes something very different. And there's this trade-off that happens where all of that apprehension and, and mystery and buildup is exchanged for shock and grisly detail. Because once the characters know what's going on, they just have to survive. And it's not that I didn't like the second half of the movie, I actually did like it. And I'm not opposed to horror movies being grisly and gross and exploitative. It's just that it felt like at that point I was watching a very different movie. Like there were two very different movies in one. And that incongruity doesn't really make for a very cohesive viewing experience. It's why a lot of the humor, which even though I thought that it was funny by itself, doesn't really gel with the tone of the rest of the movie. And on top of that, the ending is just incredibly weak in my opinion. Still, it is nice to see a horror movie really go for broke like this, and overall I did enjoy it. So, three out of five stars. Next up we have Pearl, which is the prequel to X, which I actually reviewed on my channel earlier this year. And here we see Mia Goth reprising one of her roles from X, where she plays this idyllic, Texas farm girl in 1918 America who is living what seems like this very idealistic life but eventually it gives way to the repression that she's dealing with because of her very austere and strict 
German immigrant mother, which eventually gives way to her having a psychotic break and committing a series of violent murders. And I was really excited for this because my biggest problem with X was that I felt like it was pulling from an era of filmmaking that, you know, has already been pulled from a bunch and kind of made it feel a little bit derivative and stale, whereas Pearl sort of shifted its slasher gaze to an era of filmmaking that doesn't get that much attention, which is the sort of technicolor era of film with films like The Wizard of Oz and The Searchers and West Side Story. And initially this was sort of billed as a sort of slasher film set in that era. Think The Wizard of Oz meets The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I really love that premise for a horror movie. I mean, that era of filmmaking is so expressive and so rich and there's so much that you can draw from. Unfortunately, it never really feels like Pearl truly fulfills its promise of a Technicolor fever nightmare. And in fact, just kind of feels and, and looks a lot like X with some flourishes thrown into the mix to give the impression of a modern day Technicolor film. I've actually gone back and forth on whether or not I prefer this or X. I mean, on one hand, I feel like Pearl's character in this is more fleshed out than Maxine's character was in X, but the more I think about it, the more I actually feel like X's very sleazy setting lends itself better to Ty West's style of filmmaking. So there is going to be one more film in the series called Maxine. Who knows? There might be more movies after that. I'm not exactly holding my breath for Maxine since it's supposed to take place in the 80s, which is a decade of filmmaking that I feel like has been squeezed even drier than the 1970s which I talked a little bit about in my Nope review where I was talking about Stranger Things and just how there's all of this just revivalism and nostalgia that I'm just sick of already. That being said, one of the things that I am optimistic about is that of all the films that sort of draw from the 80s and, and you know, attempt to recreate that style of 80s filmmaking, one of the best films to do it is... The House of the Devil, which is a film that Ty West directed. So who knows? Maybe he's able to do for 1980s horror in Maxine uh, what he did for 1980s horror in The House of the Devil. Overall, I think that Pearl is a solid and still pretty colorful uh, dark slasher comedy. Three out of five stars. God, just look at these fucking assholes. I'm trying to record a video here and they're they're just they're 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 like drifting in the adjacent parking garage. They won't stop. They've they, look look at this. They, they do this every night. They do this every night where there's space on the the parking what, what is this? What are we? What are we? Are are we are we 16? I don't get it. Anyway, I'll do my best to ignore that. Um, sorry about the background commotion. Uh, but anyway, finally we have Smile, which is a film that follows a therapist who begins to have a series of horrifying and violent fantasies after seeing a patient commit suicide in front of her while giving her a devilish grin. Smile essentially has the same premise as The Ring, but rather than it revolving around a curse that is spread through a videotape, it is about a curse that is spread through somebody seeing this, this sadistic smile on somebody's face right before they kill themselves. It's kind of a goofy premise for a horror movie, but this honestly goes to show how much you can wring from a lackluster 
premise with some really talented direction. And Parker Finn seems to show that he's a pretty talented director in his directorial debut. Because on one hand, Smile runs the risk of being corny and goofy, but also pretentious for using its horror framework as a kind of metaphor for trauma or mental illness or whatever. And for a lot of people, it's gonna be both. It's gonna be something that is both very goofy and pretentious, but for this reviewer personally, I thought that it did a great job of walking this very fine line and ended up being something that was very scary and stressful and anxiety inducing in the best way possible. It mostly falls under the purview of psychological horror and derives most of its scares from building a sense of dread and also using some very appropriately placed jump scares, but it also sprinkles in some very violent set pieces into the mix and some very gory ownage. And while it may crib its premise pretty directly from movies like The Ring and It Follows, it also borrows the principles of those movies that made them so successful and scary in a way that feels unique to itself. I feel like it's a disservice to say that this movie is about mental illness or trauma, and it's possible that that's what Parker Finn's intention was, but I just kind of approached it as a stri straightforward psychological horror movie, and in that sense found it to be very effective. And one of the most fun times that I've had at a theater in a while. So yeah, four out of five stars. And that's it. Those are my thoughts on some of the spooky, spooktober, scary movies that have come out this past month. Let me know what some of your favorite horror movies of the year so far are. Let me know what your thoughts on these movies are. Did I misunderstand Barbarian? Is it actually a modern day exploitation cult classic that I'm just not cool enough to get? Is Smile actually totally lame and the only reason I liked it is because I'm a big baby? Let me know. Roast me. Roast me in the comments. So until next time, see you guys later. Take care.